it is so close of actually being a Venota. Hi guys and welcome to a card review for Sigarda Champion of Light that is sadly not as strong as Venota is. However, whenever a legendary creature has a card drawing or kinda card drawing ability that it can easily become a card engine for a deck. Basically you ramp this into play and then you let this card fuel your game plan. And this Sigarda version can do that, she's just not as strong as many other commander options that we currently have, which means that, that she falls down in a lower power level. She has a mana cost of 4, which is great, that means she can get her into play quite efficiently and fast with some green dorks like Avacyn's Pilgrim, that is also a human, we're gonna get to that part soon, but also with a Yule Lotus, you can get her into play as fast as turn 1. This is flying, trample, humans you control, get plus 1 plus 1, 4-4, four, four, legendary creature, angel here. Coven. Whenever Sigarda attacks, she has flying, so she's usually going to be capable of attacking quite safely. If you control three or more creatures with different powers, for example, that power four down there is going to be a contributor. Look at the top five cards of your library. You may reveal a human creature card from among them and put it into your hand. Put the rest in the bottom of your library in a random order. If we compare that to Venota, Venota's ability scales. Whenever you attack with a non-human creature, you get a Venota trigger, which means you can get several Venota triggers during the same turn, while with Sigarda, you only get one trigger each turn. But there are two upsides with Sigarda, even though they're kind of small ones. First, Sigarda is the only one that needs to attack. She has flying, while Venota's creatures they are usually 1-1s on the ground, and sometimes you're just sending them towards death for Venota triggers, and that is a little bit sad. Sometimes you don't have attackers, while with Sigarda you're always going to have attackers. This is going to be more consistent card... not card draw, but card draw. Another big thing is that you can build your deck completely human tribal. With Venota you have to mix to make it functional, you have to have like... A bunch of non-humans and then a whole bunch of humans to get both worlds functional. In this case, you can just fill the deck with humans, which means that you're probably never going to fizzle with this ability, while sometimes you actually do fizzle with the Venota triggers. But then we get to the biggest thing while we know that you're so much stronger is that you're putting them directly into play attacking, while in this case you're getting them directly to your hand, and that is a huge difference. For example, both of them can actually get a Grand Abolisher, but if we know that's the case, that Grand Abolisher is going to get directly into play before your opponent actually has a chance of getting priority. So suddenly, out of nowhere, your opponents can't interact with you during your turn. While in Sigarda's case, this goes to your hand, and then you have to cast it, which means your opponents can counterspell it. And to me, that makes Sigarda pretty terrible. Honestly, I would love if they would actually change that. I have a feeling that... When Wizard of the Coast made Venota, they realized, oh, they kind of made a card a little bit too good, and we should power down. However, in CDH, Venota is like, decent power level, so... But I, I understand that there are other formats to consider. But I do like the fact about this commander that you can really build a human tribal deck. That really dig out a lot of humans that you cast stacks and control the board with like a glow rider this glow rider is a human by the way and falia is a good card as well she's gonna have a really clean and easy straightforward game plan i actually think this is a good introduction kind of deck for a beginner into cdh because i think you can build this in somewhat of a budget and you don't need to think much grabbing this deck and playing with it. You cast Sigarda, or well, first you actually ramp some dorks into play, you maybe ramp a Folly into play, you get Sigarda into play, and you start to just attack, fuel cards to your hand, and build towards something. Getting your condition met with three different powers isn't gonna be that tricky at all, as Sigarda will help out giving you one of the conditions. You're probably not gonna have that many 4-4s inside your deck. And then, for example, here, Bird of Paradise, that's zero. And Ulvenwald Tracker, I highly recommend Ulvenwald Tracker if you're building this deck, is a 1-1. One, one. So here, with these three creatures, you have the condition met already. Also, by the way, with an Avacyn's Pilgrim and a Llanowar Elf and Sigarda, you also have the condition met. Now, you have two 1-1s, one, but with Sigarda, you give all humans this Human Monk plus 1 plus 1, making this as a 2-2, two, two, and Llanowar Elves into a 1-1, one, one, and Sigarda as a 4-4, four, four, and you have the condition met. The Coven stuff. This deck also has a pretty clean and epic game plan, an overrun 
as you're putting a lot of hate bears into play, mana dorks and just creatures in general with a Celestia deck, that's pretty much what Celestines are good at, creating maybe tokens as well, you can cast Natural Order, sacrifice one of your dorks like the land or elf, and get Crater Hoof Behemoth, which is going to make all your creatures into huge creatures with Trample, just attack and win, and you win. That is literally a one-card combo. Also, you're going to be quite capable of producing a lot of mana with a green deck, so hard casting Crater Hoof shouldn't be a problem either, including you're playing a stack deck, so you're delaying the game, so you're probably going to be able to get the card draw and the lands you need to cast this thing. Also, you're probably going to play Allosword Shepherd, which can also turn all of your creatures into bigger creatures and smash harder. There are just so many epic humans this deck can play, but also with Allosaurus Shepherd and Sigarda, you can first attack with Sigarda, get the trigger, and then somewhere in during blockers, you can activate the Allosaurus Shepherd. Also, still, all your humans will still get a plus one plus one from Sigarda, so Sigarda is also helping out with that Overran strategy ID. And of course, Elish Norn. Of course, Elish Norn. Great hate bear and an Overrun creature as well. Even though they aren't humans, you should probably play Gadok Teague, Vizier of Menagerie and Yasharn as well, as they are just good hate bears and good card draw in general. As a finalized review, I think Sigarda has things going for her. She has a deck that could probably win, she has a game plan and all the cards that she needs. However, her ability is just a little bit too weak to like compete. So I don't think this is something you should bring to like CDH tournaments or even real CDH games. But in a lower power level, I think she could function. And everything doesn't need to be best of the best. There are cool and fun things here as well. And if you want to run into a lower power level, I definitely think this is a commander you could pick up and try to compete with. I actually also think that there's going to be CDH players that are going to build this and try to bring it versus real CDH decks like Blue Farm and etc. Just because they enjoy the challenge, but also because they kind of want to play something new. I wouldn't be surprised if I actually played against this, but in the end, I don't recommend it. Play Venota instead. Venota is going to do the exact same thing, but better. Well, what about putting this inside a 99? I don't think anyone should do that because you want to have this inside your 99 if you're looking for more card drawing capabilities. And there are better card draw capabilities than this. Also, this forces you to build a really high human creature count and I don't think any deck out there really want to do that. Well I did build a CC deck that was 60 creatures and I've seen some other people also build like high amounts of creatures inside their decks and that seems to work-ish. However, we already have better card drawing capabilities inside that deck and I'm not really looking for more card drawing capabilities so this isn't really a card that I would put inside that specific CSA deck. Well, that's it. Hope you learned something new. i see you around, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like what I do and you want to support me, feel free to share my videos or even checking out my Patreon page. Also, purchasing cards from the TCG Players website using the affiliate link in the description below of the video will also help the channel grow. So a big thank you to all of you.